Magic Detective, starring the world's greatest living magician, Blackstone. He tells you the inside story of The Riddle of the Red Rose. And right after the story, Blackstone will explain tricks that you yourself can perform. Reveal the guarded secrets of the world's greatest living magician. For Blackstone, the Magic Detective. You know, Blackstone, I was reading the other day about the Indian fakirs who grow mango trees right in front of you. And the first thing you know, they have fruit on the trees. Oh, we saw that out in India, didn't we, Blackstone? Yes, we did. It's quite a trick. Well, can you do it? Why, Don, you know perfectly well that mangoes don't grow in this climate. If this were Florida now, or or Panama... Mm, But it isn't. So, no mangoes? So, no mangoes. Do the rose bush trick for him, Blackstone. Would you like to see that, Don? Of course he would. Well, here goes then. I take this empty flower pot and put it on the table. Now, I wave my hand slowly back and forth over the pot like this. Are you watching carefully, Don? I certainly am, but I don't see anything except the empty pot. Hey, hey, wait a minute. It's filling with dirt. Where's that coming from? It's magic, Don. Now, watch Blackstone carefully. I pass my hands back and forth again, and again, and again. There's a shoot coming up in the pot, a green shoot. It's growing higher and higher. It's, it's beginning to put out leaves. Why, it's a rose bush. If you make that plant bloom, Blackstone, I'll pass out. Well, watch there near the top of the bush, Don. Right there. Why, it's a bud. Yes, and it's opening. It's a white rose. And there's another, another. Gosh, they're perfect. You never believe they were artificial. Artificial? They are not. Oh, come now. Of course they're artificial. Well, here, Don, I'll pick a couple of them. See? Smell them, Don. Feel the petals. Well, I'll be darned. Here's one for you to wear in your buttonhole. Thanks. Now, this is a swell white rose. Is it, Don? Well, of course it is. Look in the mirror. Hey, what the devil? It, it, it's red. It's turned red. Blackstone, you better tell him how you devised the trick. (laughs) Do you want to hear about it, Don? Well, I certainly do. Well, Rhoda and I went to a party one night at the home of a friend of mine, Luther Clifton. Clifton's a funny old goat. He's about 112 and has spent his whole life inventing things. Mm, Some of his inventions were very good, Rhoda. Yeah, I know, but lots of them were awfully silly. I guess the reason I can't believe he was ever a good inventor was because he'd never stopped talking about his inventions. He bored me half to death. Well, he is eccentric, of course, but really very nice. Rhoda and I got to the party a little early. Some of the guests had already arrived. And when we got there, the old man was in a swivet. He grabbed us and took us into his study and started pouring out his woes. Oh, dear me, Mr. Blackstone, I don't know what I'm going to do. I swear I don't. I can't get a man to come out and fix it until Monday. Everybody's so independent these days. And something's bound to happen. I, I know it. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Hey, relax. Take it easy. That's easy enough for you to say, Rhoda, my child. Well, suppose you tell us what the trouble is, Luther. There are things worth millions there, millions, and irreplaceable, too. My life's work gone. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Well, uh, what is it that's been stolen, Luther? Stolen? Stolen? Has something been stolen? You said your life work had been stolen. Stolen? Yes. Oh, no, not stolen, not yet. But it's going to be, yes, sir, just as sure as I'm Luther Augustus Clifton. You mean you think your inventions are going to be stolen? That's it. That's exactly it. (laughs) Very clever of you to guess. Very clever. Well, why don't you put them in your safe? Did, of course. Did. Then what's upsetting you? The safe. It's not safe. Hmm? What do you mean? Just what I say. Just exactly what I say. Always make a point of meaning what I say. Accommodation's been stolen. And you can't get anyone to change it until Monday? That's right. Everybody's so independent these days. Or did I say that before? You said it before. Uh, Tell me, where is your safe? (laughs) That's my little secret. Nobody knows. You mean the safe is hidden? Yes. Right in this room. See if you can find it. (laughs) Bet you can't. Bet I can. Bad manners for a lady to make bets. However, try and find it. You too, Blackstone. <laughs> Bet you can't. It's in this room? Yes. Yeah. Behind a picture? Nope. In that uh, cabinet of glassware? <laughs> nope. Well, what's this cabinet over here? It has a door in it. I bet that's where it is. Open it and see. Oh, 
Oh, it's a music box. One of my inventions. Clever, isn't it? But it's not for sale. No, sir. Not for sale. Well, what about the bookcase? Oh, am I oh. intruding, Luther, dear? Oh, uh, Juanita, come in, come in, come in. Juanita Marsh, Miss Brent, Mr. Blackstone. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? Juanita's been staying with me for several days. Her mother was an old friend of mine. Don't remember her very well, but Juanita says she was. Juanita's very good to an old man. Well, go on guessing. Go on, go on. You uh, still want us to go on? Oh, Juanita knows that the combination's missing, don't you, child? Does uh, she know where the safe is? No. She can play, too. Go on, yes. Oh, we've just about covered everything in the room. I know. It's behind that mirror over there on the mantel. <laughs> clever of you, Blackstone. Very clever. With a mind like yours, you should have been an inventor. Yes, indeed, you... Hmm. What are you doing, Juanita, child? I'm arranging these roses I picked for you, Luther. I thought they'd make your study look more festive. Don't they look lovely? Oh, I love white roses. And that one red one looks beautiful with them. <laughs> yes, that's what I thought. Now, I'll put some more here. A few on the mantel. One over here on the music box. There. Thank you, my child. I'll pour water into these vases. Oh, this uh, red one by the mirror is stunning, isn't it? Such a deep shade. And this white one over here on the music box is lovely. It's a little crooked, though. There, that's better. Uh, why don't you take Miss Brent out and show her the rose garden, Juanita, dear? Oh, I'd like to very much. Why don't you and Mr. Blackstone come with us? Uh, we'll be along in a minute. I want to speak to Mr. Clifton. Run along, Juanita, and be sure to show Miss Brent the new hose I invented. Sprinkles from the center. Most amazing, most amazing. I'll see you later, Blackstone. Uh, is your Juanita your only guest, Luther? Uh, there's a young man here, too. A uh, Ray Blakely. Charming chap. Charming. Well... What shall we do about the safe, Blackstone? Can't leave it alone, you know. That's exactly what we're going to do. Leave it alone. Luther, is some place near here where we can hide? Oh, uh, yes, the little closet off the study. Fine. Come on. We'll hide there until we catch our thief. Over, I shoot. Take your thief, Luther. He stole the combination to your safe and was just about to rob it of its contents. But the music box gave him away. Oh, Blackstone, what's happening? Luther, what's happened to Ridge? Why is Mr. Blackstone pointing his gun at him? Grab one either, Rhoda. Oh, I've got her. Oh, hey, let go of my hair, you. i got her. You can't prove anything. I was with Rhoda all the time. And it was you who arranged the flowers. I don't understand, Blackstone. What connection did the flowers have to the attempted safe robbery? And how did you know that Reg was trying to rob the safe? When Juanita came in, she heard us guess where the safe was. Then she arranged the roses around the room. That's right, but still... She had only one red rose, remember? And she placed that on the mantel right under the mirror that hid the safe. It was a signal to Reg so he could find it. But why did he open the music box, then, instead of going direct to the safe? That's where the magic comes in. I dropped a pellet containing a special aniline dye into the vase on the music box. The rose absorbed the color. And he put a pill containing a bleaching solution into the vase with a red rose. I wanted Reg to open the music box as a signal to me that he was there. Then all I had to do was to go in and nab him. Wonderful. So another mystery was solved by magic. Say, it looks like we're going to see a card trick, Rhoda. Well, if we do, it won't be the usual sort. Blackstone isn't going to have us take cards. He's taking some himself. Well, don't you let that fool you, Rhoda. I'll have you pick a card in a moment. Only I'll do it differently. Differently? How? I'm going to have you pick a card mentally without telling me what it is. And then discover the card I thought of? Absolutely. Say, this will be good, if it's possible. It's very possible, Don. Now, here are three cards, Rhoda. The six of clubs, the eight of diamonds, and the ten of spades. Am I supposed to remember them? You're supposed to think of one and keep your mind fixed on it. But don't tell me the name of the card. Uh, not yet. All right. I've thought of one. Very well. I'll put the three cards in my pocket, faces down. I'll keep concentrating, Rhoda. I'm concentrating. Now I shall remove two of the cards from my pocket without showing the faces. I shall put them face down on the pack. That leaves one card in your pocket. That's right. And is that one card supposed to be mine? It should be. Just tell Don the name of your card so he can see if I'm right. I thought of the ten of spades, and if it's in your pocket, I'll scream. Let's see the card you kept, Blackstone. Here it is, right from my pocket. 
Ah, it's a can of spades. Oh, wait a minute, Blackstone. Can you work that trick again? I can work it any time and every time. So can you, if I tell you how. And how's that? Well, think it over, Rhoda. And if you can't guess, I'll be back to explain the whole trick to you. the explanation of the mental card mystery, Blackstone. All right. I showed you three cards, didn't I? A six, an eight, and a ten. Yeah, but can they be any cards? Any cards, so long as you keep them in order. In this case, the top card is the six, the next, the eight, and the bottom, the ten. Why is that? Because before I began the trick, Rhoda, I put two extra cards into my pocket. You mean any two cards? Any two cards. Only you didn't know they were there. No, I didn't. Neither did I. All I showed you were three cards, Rhoda. You thought of one, and I placed all three in my pocket. And then you took out two. Yes, but the two I took out were those extra cards you didn't know about. Say, now I get it. You put those two cards on the pack without showing them. And in your pocket, you still had all three of the cards you showed me. Exactly. And what happened next, Rhoda? Why, you had me tell Don the name of the card that I thought of. Yes, you had uh, Rhoda name the card aloud so I could check it. And I was checking it, too, in my pocket. I had the three original cards, a six, an eight, and a ten. Oh, and whichever one I named, you simply brought that one out. Exactly. And the trick was done. Remember, Don, you asked me if I could repeat it? Yes. Of course I can repeat it with three other cards. Because in my pocket I have two extras left over from the last time. Say, I'm going to work that stunt on all my friends. Only I'll use my handbag instead of a pocket. I bet our listeners are beginning to work it on their friends right now. That's a swell trick, Blackstone. I hope you like that trick, ladies and gentlemen. And until next time, this is Blackstone saying good magic and goodbye. with us next time when the world's greatest living magician, Blackstone, tells us the story of the Aztec Fire God and explains more tricks that you yourself can perform. Listen in again to Blackstone, the world's greatest living magician. (laughs) 